friends, welcome to another episode of Cam Request. I will be showcasing the Nashika N8000. This is a 3D camera, has four lenses, captures four images on a 35 millimeter film strip. I believe there's some modern equivalents of this out and about. Introducing a new dimension in photography, the Nashika N8000 3D camera. Because the world isn't flat. I've come across these multiple times in my life. The first time I had one, I bought it at Bookman's, the local secondhand entertainment stop. For example, this 36 exposure roll will give me 18 3D pictures. Just any standard 35 millimeter 100 ASA color print film. But remember, the Nishika camera uses two frames of film for each 3D picture. So you'll get half as many photos as indicated on the label but they'll be three times as thrilling. Never shot with it. I remember researching at the time and they were like, oh, you have to send it to a certain lab to get the results and blah, blah, blah. After you've completed a roll of film, pop it into one of the convenient postage paid mailers that Nishika provides free of charge and you're ready to send it off to Nishika's lab for processing. That's not true. I mean, it just uses regular 35 millimeter film that you can develop anywhere that develops 35 millimeter film. And uh, so I traded that camera without ever shooting it. And like a boomerang, another one came back in my life. My main muse, Cheyenne, had found one at a uh, state sale, I believe, and gifted it to me. And I'm like, well, I'm gonna use this thing. And went out, shot quite a bit on it over a period of maybe like four months and found it to be really cool in the gifts it made, but you know, for bang for your buck, like getting results. Uh, if I shot a roll of 35 millimeter film through this, I got probably like three or four gifts that I could use out of it. I shot it horizontally, I shot it vertically and used color, used black and white, like all point and shoot cameras, it's not super sharp, but on camera quest, that's beside the point. We are looking for things that are useful as art making tools and as, you know, cool things that we can have in our arsenal that we don't see a lot of out there. Because part of the way that we stand out in the world of image makers is to create things that are unique. Each time you take a picture, make sure the lighting selector is at the right setting. Sunny, partly sunny, or cloudy indoors. Not cloudy indoors, it means cloudy or indoors. When you're outside, choose any of these, depending on the lighting conditions. But when you're indoors, set the aperture selector to cloudy indoors. As a camera that has a unique effect, and probably something that you can find super cheap in a lot of thrift stores. I actually recommend the Nishika 3D N8000. Don't think you're gonna get like a whole career based on shooting this stuff. I was able to take some of my gifts and make music videos of my own. There's TikToks, there's boomerangs, uh, there's the NFT market. There's ways to market and utilize these strange uh, lo-fi gifts that I don't think there was in the past. And certainly there's apps that will do similar kind of back and forth 3D effects, but you know, I'm, I'm a purist. I like the real thing. And the Nishika N8000 is the real thing. Camera that works, camera I recommend if you come across it in your thrifting. So now that I've shown you some of the actual visuals of it, I'll go ahead and show you on Photoshop how I'm able to get my three-dimensional GIFs, uh, I've scanned my film and in a high enough resolution that it's workable, usually about 1600 pixels per inch, that's what I scan my film at. And from there, I'm going to open it in Photoshop, take a layer, create a new layer from it, shift it over on top of the old one with the transparency set low enough that I can see through. And once I have it aligned, I'll go ahead and use my crop tool to crop it down to a single frame. Then I'll take that second layer, duplicate it again, shift it over again, and repeat this process until I have my four frames all aligned using the edges of the frame as my main alignment. From there, it's opening the timeline tool in Photoshop, setting it to frame by frame, 
and then I advance my frames 0.2 seconds. To get the full boomerang effect for your GIF, you need to first set the frames in sequence, one, two, three, four, then we go back to three, then we go back to two, and now it's a full GIF. A beautiful video loop, very nutty. All I can suggest to you is that if you are gonna stick some 35 millimeter film in it, get the cheap stuff, get the you know student grade material, no need to buy the Velvia slide film that you can only process from people who process E6 or something like that. It's gonna be a waste of your money, waste of your time. One thing I haven't tried with it though is utilizing some of like the very specialty films like the, uh, the purple film from Lomo or Metropolis film or the stuff that has the snow dots on it. I really like that and I haven't used it in a couple of years. Uh, I think that'd be real fun to stick in here and have everything else kind of consistent in the frame. You know, the model is stone still and it's those specks, that lightning, that color shift uh, that happens across the entire roll of that specialty film that gets fed into the GIF. Just thinking about things you can do with film that are not impossible to do with digital stuff, but you know, nowhere near as cool looking or as real looking, uh, because there's quite a bit you can do with film. Still, that while you might fake it as much as possible in digital, it's almost pointless to fake it in digital because, you know, the hand, elements of cut collage, tape, uh, contact sheet, weird film, like, just do it that way. <laughs> it's the real way, it's the easiest way for sure. Um, the time that you'd spend faking all that digitally is not worth the money that you'd save on film, in my opinion. Anyways, the Shika N8000, something I recommend on Camera Quest. Best of luck in your creative endeavors. Talk to you next time.